What I'm also interested in at the moment is what the European community are going to do. Because uh, practically every country in ASEAN, even China, Russia, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, <coughs> South Korea, India, has said that the, um, the change of heart by the Americans, the uh, understanding agreement to go to dialogue is a good thing. So far, I've not noticed, apart from a mild explosion by Bernard Kushner, that any European statement has said anything. And I think this is very unfortunate. One would have expected by now uh, that the Swedish presidency would said something that Carl Bildt would have said, yes, we welcome this move. But in fact, he's not said anything. And it, it may be his eyes are focused more on the Lisbon Treaty and uh, uh, possible appointments that there might be. I'm told he has a particular interest in this Gilbert and Sullivan high representative of the Union for um, uh, security and, uh, and uh, political policy. Well, it's all very unfortunate. There is a meeting on the 16th and 17th of uh, November of uh, European foreign ministers. And I do hope that then that they will make some announcement. But so far there's been no announcement. There are vague rumors from Brussels that the British are being difficult. Uh, I would rather expect them to be difficult because uh, they simply don't trust the Burmese the way they're going. So if we're looking at uh, the future, what I would say, and it's something that I tried to raise with, um, uh, with Andrew Mitchell. Mitchell. Um, first of all, I think there are a number of sanctions that should be removed straight away. And these are, for example, uh, the, uh, the ban on international financial institutions actually going to uh, uh, Burma to find out what's going on. Uh, the restriction on ADB, IMF, and World Bank fund funding is directed at the Burmese people. It has nothing to do with uh, the regime's plans. Uh, it accounts for, in my estimate, 90% of the financial disadvantage uh, that the Burmese people at present uh, suffer. Uh, because the figures show that Burma is right at the bottom of the list of development aid, with only $4 uh, per person per year, compared with an average of 42 for developing countries. Uh, Cambodia, uh, 48, Vietnam, 68, and so on and so forth. And whichever list you take, whether it's the, um, the OECD list of fragile states, they're at the bottom of 38. Whether it's the UN's list of 55 um, uh, less developed countries, they're at the bottom of 55. And until somehow you can resolve that problem, Burma is not going to progress. Uh, there are other things that I think are slightly ridiculous. For example, um, in, uh, in February last year, European community decided to ban trade in timber, precious metals, and uh, precious stones. Uh, there has never been any trade in timber here. Uh, there are 200,000 um, sawmills in China and Thailand waiting to take every log of Burmese timber that can go that way. And the only people who have suffered have been the furniture manufacturers, uh, particularly um, uh, some who are strong supporters of uh, Aung San Suu Kyi. Indeed, one of the lists of uh, indicted uh, companies consists of 1,207 Burmese enterprises, of whom I would say 80% are supporters of freedom and democracy. And why have they been included? Not because they're a regime or um, military or, or army, but simply because, unfortunately, they're in the wrong sectors. They're jewelry men or jewelry shops, or furniture manufacturers. And uh, I really do find this extraordinary. And I did ask uh, the former minister, Bill Wilmot, whether he would do anything about this. He said, yes, he would, but of course he hasn't. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you go through the detail of it, there are a number of things that could be done now. But on the broader issue of whether there's going to be any serious political change in the next six months before the elections, whenever they're held, uh, my feeling is probably no.